Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Helga Maus from Pixel Train. And for everyone who doesn't know me, I'm a 3D and visual effects trainer and artist for more than 20 years now. Today's lesson is a demo lesson from my newest publication Pixel Train Blender Fundamentals Fast Forward. This publication is a full introduction into Blender, its workflows and tools for beginners and artists from other 3D applications. So if you want to learn Blender and don't want to watch hundreds of tutorials here on YouTube and don't get the answers you are looking for, please consider this publication. You find the trailer here on my YouTube and it's a publication which is at the moment 20 hours and 150 lessons, but it's still growing with the plus content. But now let's get into the lesson. If you have any questions, please comment below. And if you like this kind of tutorials, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up. But now let's get started. Have fun, your Helga Mouse. I think now it's a good time to talk about the transformation orientation. And this is useful not only if we work here with the transformation quick tools, but also with the way of the keyboard shortcuts. Let's get started with this simple scene. We have three Suzannes here and every Suzanne is rotated slightly different. If we now go here and say, for example, I want to move a Suzanne, then you normally have, let's take the orange one here, this axis widget, which you can use. And I explained to you that the position of the widget is always around the object origin. And then the direction here is at the moment set to the world or the global space. What does it mean? Remember in one of the first lessons, we talked about the coordinate system here of Blender, that we have a floor, which is defined by X and Y and the Z axis, which looks perpendicular to that. And this widget here is now oriented exactly like this. That means if we take Z here, for example, we move it globally in Z direction. And if you take a look here, while I'm dragging on the left top here in my option bar, you see behind your distance, there is the word global, which explains you that you are moving in global direction. The problem with the queue is now if we have a Zazen which looks in a different direction, for example, this here. You now see that the widget is still looking in this global direction. That means I can move now Zazen here in Z direction. But you maybe have now the need that you want to move Zazen not in this direction, but in the direction it is self rotated. And this is named a local space. So every object has its own coordinate system defined by its origin point, the orange one, and the orientation of the object itself. And this orientation of the red one has a rotation of minus 34 degree, this bluish one plus 90.3 degree. To give Blender now the hint that you want to work locally, you have to switch now your tool. If you have selected here now this red Suzanne, what you can do is you can go here now to this drop down here and open this. And the drop down is named Transform Orientations. And here you have a whole bunch of them. We will use many of them throughout the course. But in this lesson, I want to focus on these two global, which is the default one, and local. And if you switch this now to local, you now see that the widget is now exactly looking. Let's go here to local mode with the slash on the numpad. It's exactly looking like Suzanne is oriented. And if you now take this axis, you're moving Suzanne in this direction. And you see now behind the values in the option bar at the top that we are moving now in local direction. Let's press the slash again to go out of the local mode. Same thing here. You now see we can move now this Suzanne also in its direction. So switching these options here is something we do a lot. And for this, we have a keyboard shortcut, which I use most of the time. Instead of going into this toolbar here, what I do is I use the comma key on my keyboard. Then we get this little pie menu where you can select global on the left side and local on the right side. And the other modes are placed around that. Okay. One little hint for the beginners. 
really often people switch this mode here, for example, to local, but then forget that they have changed that. So if we go now, for example, into another tool, for example, scale, you will see that this here is still in local mode. So keep that in mind. To reset that, if you don't know exactly what was the default, hover over this drop down and press the backspace again. So it brings it back to global, which is the default direction. Another thing which maybe is interesting for you if you are coming from another 3D application is how does Blender now work if you have more than one object selected? Because at the moment, if I select all three of these and I'm in global mode and I now move them globally in the Z direction, we have a movement for all three in the same direction. But every of these three objects has its own local system. So how does this work now? Let's switch now, comma key, to local. And you see that now the axes look really strange. You remember how the axis looked if we only have one Suzanne selected. The widget here is not the best representation because now, due to the fact that you have selected three Suzannes, this is an average. But take a look here. If you now go to Z and move that, you now see that you now move all three Suzannes in their own local system. And this is really demonstrating the fact that Blender works for every of these objects separately. Let's finish this lesson by going back to this menu and switch it to globally. The last thing I want now to show, and this is also quite useful, is that you also can store your own coordinate system for a amount of time. Let's say we have this orientation here. Let's go to local and we say this here is quite useful for many other transformations you want to do. What you now can do is you can go into this menu here and click this little plus here on the right side. This creates now a new orientation. It's named Suzanne at the moment because that's the object name. You can rename that, for example, Suzanne Rat, so that you later know what this is doing. And if you now select another object, for example, this orange Suzanne here, you can now select this coordinate system, Suzanne Red. And you see now that the widget here is exactly looking into Suzanne Red's direction. So that's quite useful if you are now placing objects in a scene or so. You can have one reference object and generate a system out of that, and then you can use it for other transformations. If you want to get rid of that, click this little X sign and everything is default. So let's go back to global and finish this lesson.